Hi, my name's Brendan and welcome to Arcbow Music Publishing. This channel is essentially about music and in particular the music that I write. And as crazy as that as I may be, I like to write a wide variety of music and you will be able to see some of that featured on the channel. So I hope you can subscribe. But in saying that, on a Sunday night, which happens to be tonight, I do a different, a different type of video, and it is Brendan's Random Thoughts. And this particular random thought is a theory about sitcoms, and, and in particular, how to write a good sitcom. Now I've never written a sitcom, but I have, I've watched a lot of sitcoms, far too many over the years. And I've noticed one thing that unites the success of a sitcom. It's, it's, it's the secret ingredient to writing a sitcom. And do you want to know that secret ingredient? Of course you do. The, the secret ingredient to writing a sitcom is that characters must be selfish. And that it's as simple as that. The characters must be selfish. So how can I prove my point? How can I make this theory seem plausible. Um, I've watched sitcoms from be the moment I was born essentially and my, my favourite sitcom of all time I first watched as a two year old. It's called Faulty Towers and I find that still now hysterically funny. And it was brilliantly written and it's well acted. Everything about it is great and it I mean it is of its time, but it's still hysterically funny. And all the subsidiary characters in that show are yes, they're selfish. But the, the show hinges around the central character, which is Basil Fawlty, played by John Cleese. And He's extremely, he's an extremely selfish man. And, and that's what's funny about the show. Because he, he refuses to admit that he's made a mistake. He refuses to admit that he's wrong. And he's willing to, to, do, to do anything to, to preserve that fact that he doesn't do anything wrong. And he, he, he will tell any amount of lies. He will do any, he will do anything to preserve that. And it, it's that selfish motivation that is so funny about that show. Take another show, Seinfeld. Very well written show, hysterically funny. And, and the interesting thing about Seinfeld is the main character, Jerry Seinfeld, in my opinion, is not the funniest person on that show. And he's probably, of the four main characters, he's probably the least selfish. George Costanza is insanely selfish. Like, it's so funny. And he's, hysteri he's hysterical. It, it's brilliant. Like. He's so selfish. We, we, you can see, you can see the selfish feelings building up in him, and it's, it's hysterically funny. And and Kramer and Elaine also, are very funny, and extremely selfish. Ironically, Jerry Seinfeld is not so selfish, and his job is actually a comedian in the show, and he wrote it so. So why would you write yourself to not be the funniest in the show? He's, he's the straight man, essentially. And 
just the ne the neurotic characters around him are what is funny. The selfish nature nature of them. The Big Bang Theory is a more modern comedy, and um, the main character, Dr. Sheldon Cooper, although I would probably consider Leonard to be the hero in that particular, the main character, the, the comedy definitely lies squarely on the shoulders of Sheldon Cooper, who is... He's the most selfish character of all time. Simple as that. He, he's so egocentric. He cannot, he cannot relate to anyone else's point of view. And he just, he dismisses anyone else's point of view as rubbish. He's, he's so selfish. He, he just, he, he doesn't even exist beyond him, beyond himself. I mean, Friends, Friends was a nice comedy in the '90s and early 2000s, and all of the friends are selfish they're they're all funny and well my favorite character in friends is ross and he's definitely the most selfish amongst the group of friends and, and I, I really think david schwimmer did a great a great job playing that character and you really can see his selfish motivations when he's trying to manipulate a situation at, I find it hysterical. Um, Everyone Loves Raymond, I, I love that show. It's so well written and, and all the characters are so selfish. It, it, um, it, the show is basically the relationship between the family and the selfish relationships. The, Ray's selfish, Rob's selfish, the parents are selfish and I just think it's brilliant the way that they've structured that show. I'm, I'm not a fan of, when I watch it, it's out of focus. I'm not a fan of that, but the uh, the actual writing is, is so direct to the point that it's so, I don't know, it's just so well written. But the, but the question is, why? Why is it? that the best sitcoms are totally reliant on the characters being selfish. I think that humans, people, have an innate sense that they must understand the person that they're speaking to, the person they're relating to. And when you're watching a sitcom, I think you decide pretty quickly, I'm not going to watch this, or I really want to see what happens to these characters. And I think it's, I think it's based on the motivation. We, we, we have to know the motivation of the characters or we'll reject it. Have you heard, how many times have you heard people go, that character would never say that, that character would never do that. And, and if we can't understand that motivation, we reject the characters and, and we want to know what motivates the character as quickly as possible. And, and if you're a writer, the easiest way to do that is to make your characters selfish. If we, if we don't understand the motivations behind the character, we can't find comedy. We can't find that character funny. And if we don't understand the motivation that that drives that character, we, we don't find it funny. We, we can't relate to the context. We can't relate to the character. That's why your character has to be selfish. I mean, Scooby-Doo. Scooby-Doo wants a Scooby snack. And and he is, he he has like, a cowardly tendency to his character and he's afraid of ghosts and haunted houses but he's willing to run into the face of that danger he's willing to run straight into that haunted house past the ghosts past the ghouls past the knights in armor that, that are moving that are always on scooby-doo just for a scooby snack I, I personally find 
the motivation of food to be hysterical and whenever it's used I tend to like that particular comedy um, and I also think that that people are pretty much everyone selfish and that's why they can relate to characters that are selfish and it also means that you can laugh at yourself so if you're going to write comedy make your characters selfish I hope you like the theory leave a comment below what you thought of the theory is it a good theory is it a bad theory can you extend the theory in any way if you haven't seen any check out some of my music videos because that's what this channel is generally about and you can subscribe and watch and watch some of the music videos but, but if not if you like theories Sunday night is Brendan's random thoughts and as random as it may be it will tend to be a theoretical dis discovery of the weird place that exists in here and I hope you can subscribe and I'll see you next time You're still here. Still here. Still here. See you next time.